Hello everyone, Abby here, Purple Cottage Crafts, and welcome back to another video on my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you the items that I found at the Goodwill in Butte. It is actually my first time to thrift proper in Butte. I've been to Brian's store downtown, and those are videos that I've shared with you guys before, but as far as like a, you know, your traditional thrift shop, this is my very first time to um, do that here, which is kind of funny because I've thrifted more in Oregon since we've moved to Montana. <laughs> than I have here, so it's kind of funny. So I found um, some really cool things this time. I do have some video footage. I did film myself walking around. I'll have to put music to it because they, of course, are playing um, music and I don't want to get hit with a copyright or I may end up doing a voiceover as well. So I was showing you kind of the different items that I was looking at, some I purchased, some I didn't. Just kind of some fun different types of clothing that are, you know, essentially just textiles. So if you're looking for different textiles, maybe perhaps you can't, you know, afford to purchase uh, different types of upholstery fabric fabrics, textiles, things like that from, you know, a proper store that would sell them like a Hobby Lobby or an actual upholstery shop, things like that. You can get your different types of textiles from just the thrift store or yard sale. So this one here is pretty funky. I'm going to tell you guys, I would actually wear this. Now <laughs> You might be like, that is the ugliest sweater I've ever seen in my life. But I'm telling you, this is really cute. I mean, my husband, he was just like, uh, did you buy that to wear? <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't. I did put it on, but I am way too warm blooded. This would drive me bonkers. I'd be, you know, way too hot. But it's, it's it's just a fun little funky sweater. I like it. And so the reason I grabbed this is because of all of this textile right here. All of these different fibers that are on this. And they're just tied in. You can see where it's tied in right there. I like picking apart things like, you know, like cutter quilts or, you know, I love to iron. I love all that kind of fiddly stuff. So this to me is not a big deal at all. And I can just kind of, you know, pick off as I need to. So these are the types of things that I would use on, you know, pretty much any kind of a project like this one here that I did recently or I completed recently. I started a couple years ago. This would be so cool to take a piece of this fiber and you can stitch it on just like I did this wool. You can do like a quick blanket stitch if you wanted to do that or excuse me a couching stitch. You can add it as a layer on something. You, could, you know connect them together and make a tie off of um, for a journal. But I mean just look at that piece right here. You just have this is just great you guys all of this textile and these fibers right here that you can use in projects. So I was very pleased to find this. As you can see, there is just a ton of these little fiber pieces all over this. So it's just a really fun, kind of quirky item that I found. I've never came across anything else like that before. Uh, right here, this is a was in the dress section and it's just a basic cotton, the main body of the dress. And down here on the bottom is just, you know, your basic cotton, which is always there we go, focus, which is always a good staple to have in your stash. But I bought it because of all of this lace work. Now this isn't like vintage or anything, but it's got gorgeous laces. So if you don't have access to purchasing laces like at a craft store or online or something like that, when you go out thrifting, you know, just just look at the different clothing options that are there and you can just cut this all apart and just have quite a bit of different laces to use. There's some netting right here on this one, you know, and I'm not telling you guys anything that hasn't already been out there for eons, of course, but just in case somebody never thought to look for thrifted clothing to use for, you know, fabrics and uh, different laces and embellishments and textiles and stuff, this is a great source to do that. So just lots of um, different laces on here to take apart. And then I have the bonus of having additional um, basic fabric cotton. And this here is another dress. I can't show you the whole thing, of course, because it's too long for my table. But this is just, I love this. Uh, Sophie's chewing on a little treat bone. So if you hear that in the background, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, so this is, uh, I love this piece. This is a ton of Swiss dot on here. Look at that. And this type of material dyes very easily, whether you're doing rusting, eco natural dyes or coffee or tea. So I was very, very pleased to come across this larger dress. I've seen this type of material in like smaller, like little girl dresses, but to find an adult size dress is just fantastic because there's just a ton on here. So that's another uh, resource as well for, you know, some really cool different types of uh, textiles and different materials. Now, typically, as I've mentioned before in past thrifting videos, I typically do not even look in the pajama uh, section just because I, I just don't. <laughs> I usually find them to be pretty well worn more th than what I would probably use for projects and stuff. But this one looks, you know, I checked this one over and I don't see like any stains, anything weird on it at all. It's completely just like looks like new, but it's not because it was in a thrift store and the tag's been cut out, which is something I do too because I can't stand it when the tags are itching my back. But this is just, 
you guys look at this this is just a ton of this gauzy linen material and then on the top I get the bonus of some lace as well so check out your you know that section of the store if you typically don't and the only reason I came across this is because this was very close to the dress section and so like at St. Vinny's it's like a separate area but this was like on the same rack so that's how I came across this and I was really happy that I did because that is just a lot of material for stitching and all kinds of fun projects so this blouse here that I found, this is pretty cute. This is probably something I would have picked out um, at a store and worn myself. And it's got like this netting right here, the sleeves, and it's just got this great textile to it. It's very nice for a tactile person. Just lots of great detail and visual texture as well as when you touch it. So it's really nice and we have this more solid piece right here on the inner part of the sleeve and I selected this because I instantly thought of sashiko or doing even um, like borrow stitching or something like that or mending and I thought this would be a great piece to add to my different fabrics materials that I have for when I do sashiko stitching so I will um, link the playlist for that below I think I only have one video so far <laughs> because I keep moving to different things but I will definitely be adding more to that so if you want to watch for that playlist and underneath here we just have this polyester lining so there's that but you could even use the reverse side if you wanted to so I just like the indigo blue colors that I thought was really cool so that's a large piece of um, fabric as well and then here this I thought this was a beautiful blouse and this is just nice this is like cotton lace on here and I love that I'm not a huge fan of like the polyester lace it's just a personal taste no shade against people who like it nothing wrong with it I have some of my stash and I've used it plenty before I just like this the feel of this a little bit better for me and there's just lots of detail in here in the bottom and I can cut this apart so you know just great 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 textile and texture and um, for you know all kinds of different projects that you like to do. So it is some great uh, texture here and um, a textile piece to use and it has this large button right there so that's pretty nice and this is a pretty good size. This is a size large at least for this brand. That's a lot of lace right there. Okay and a couple more pieces of clothing and then we'll move on to just a few bits of fabric that I found. As I've mentioned many times before this is a really nice linen material. This is not like an old blouse it's Cherokee brand. So you guys this is great for just like your basic projects yeah, for stitching on embroidery. You know you could do dyeing, binding, all kinds of fun stuff. And you know linen is not the um, most inexpensive to purchase especially if you're buying it from an online retailer or even a brick and mortar where it's mostly geared for people who uh, make clothing. You know, and the cost of linen, uh, rightly so, is a little bit higher price point that I found versus like cottons and stuff, uh, just because of the process of taking this from the flax plant. And so uh, there's some really cool videos on YouTube if you want to research that a little bit more yourself. But this is just a great base piece. So I always look for, you know, linen items as well. Okay, this next one here, again, I'm not going to be able to show it to you in its entirety because of the size of it, but this is like a bridal, uh, bridesmaid's dress or possibly a prom dress, I'm not sure, and uh, it's a strapless one here, so it's got some of the boning in here, which is great for binding for different projects, and I just love this material. It's got this really nice kind of slubby detail on there, and... The bottom part of the dress has the, the same material in a white color and then the bow, I took the bow part or off before I laundered it just so I could make sure the bow would, you know, was open up as much as possible, the fabric so it could get clean and I haven't taken it apart yet all the way but um, this was the bow on the back side. This is uh, what was tying the bow or attached the bow to the back of the dress. This is a great piece to use in journals and there's a lot here. And, you know, so also check out that section and this type of tool, you know, thicker netting material, which is what you would find in bridal dresses as well. This works great for all kinds of things, you know, for base layers. You can definitely do some different staining with this. I've done it in the past and it's worked out really well for me. And this is a 100% polyester dress here material and it's got the label inside. So this is like a smaller um, brand, like for probably like a smaller, you know, finer dress shop or something like that. So just, yeah, check out the formal wear section. If it's a really good price point, I would suggest or recommend grabbing something if you see it, because you can definitely get a lot of yardage out of items like this. 
Okay, so moving on to the last few items, I found these two pillowcases together and these are just, you know, you guys all know this, cutting this apart, using it for, you know, your different projects or if you collect vintage or older pillowcases or you can use them like in a guest room or something if you so choose to do so. I always check the pillowcases and see if there's any stains or anything kind of odd looking on there. If there is and the binding might be like a really old embroidery or some kind of a cool detail, I'll go ahead and purchase it and then just cut the part off that I don't feel comfortable using and then I'll just salvage it. So these two here didn't have any kind of weird markings or anything so I was happy to have found that. And this is like a tea towel or larger it could even be a tablecloth, I suppose. It's because it's folded over in, in half here, but it has a sunflower on there. I didn't buy it for that. I bought it for the material. So I was happy to find that because that is quite a bit here. I think there are four, yeah, on each corner. So this is probably like maybe a tablecloth or something. It's a little bit larger than I remembered it being, which is great because that is a lot of linen material here. So very happy to have found that. And this is like a hand towel, I'm assuming some type of a kitchen towel or something. But I, you know, I grabbed this and then I, you know, just had it on my cart while I was shopping around thinking about it. And I almost put it back, but I thought, you know what, this is a really cool textile. I like the, the feel of it. I like the couching stitches that is, are done on there. I'm sure this is machine done since it's probably, probably like a mass made towel or something, I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't think there was a branding tag on it, if I remember right. No, there's no tag on it. But this is just, you know, guys, this is a great little textile. And if you're intimidated by maybe the pattern, like maybe it's too busy, if you just kind of cut it down and just have like a smaller square, you could use it in a smaller way. And that way it's not maybe so overwhelming. Or if you just want like a pop of the red color or whatever color of the item that you find, and just kind of a really great pop of texture there. So I was really happy to have found this in kind of like the kitchen towels area so I was happy to have found this one and then here is just a uh, like a fabric napkin pretty basic but again it's a this is a cotton linen blend here so and I didn't get this ironed either so I apologize for that here we just have some yardage I cut the um, one piece off because it was odd and that but that bothers me so I have to make it as square as possible so when I fold it this is just a nicer thicker um, heavier type of cotton material so Got quite a bit of that. I'm not sure what the yardage was. It didn't say on the tag, but you know, that, that's there's a lot there. So I was really happy to find that. Another great base type of material to have in your stash. All right, and then last but not least is this vintage hanky here. I don't think it's like super, super old or anything, but I, you know, again, the fabric, the material. So, and then this can be cut off and used in other projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and have the rest of the video coming up now in case you were just interested in this part, but I'll be, uh, more than likely I'll be doing a voiceover or at least putting subtitles on the screen, kind of showing you guys different types of textiles that you can find when you're out thrifting. If you don't have access to, you know, types of stores that would sell it by the yard or on a bolt or something like that. You can find some really cool, unique, different types of fibers and textiles and linens and all that kind of stuff just at a thrift store. So I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and I will see you guys soon. Bye! All right, so what I'm doing now is just kind of going through the section where they have like towels and tablecloths, and placemats, you know, linens, things of that nature. So this is what I have actually on the front of the cart. And as I mentioned before, I kind of grab things that I think I'm interested in, and then I put it in my cart, and then I edit myself. So that is one of the um, dresses and the nightgown that you're going to see, or actually you already saw it earlier in the video. And then what you're going to see in the video I'm going to be uploading next as I cut it apart. These are just some different bits and bobs and fabrics that were in bags and some different string and crochet thread. Here is, uh, or here are, excuse me, a few goodies I found in the household goods section. And um, you'll see the wall where I grabbed these little bagged items. And now I'm just going up and down some of the aisles. This is, I really wish I would have grabbed that jacket. I don't know why I didn't. So I'm going to have to uh, look for it again when I go back the next time because I really like that and just going down the aisles a little bit more. You're gonna see some little uh, clips and like jumps like you just saw because I tried to not film people, so. And just going down the denim aisle, jean aisle. I've, I didn't grab any of those kinds of things this time. This is kind of the wedding dress, prom dress, bridesmaid dress section. And this is where I found that um, pink, uh, I guess prom dress I'll call it. And just some random skirts and different textures. This one is pretty cool. And now we're just going down this aisle here. I thought those pants were pretty cool and kind of funky. 
Those pants just kind of cracked me up. So <laughs> I guess it'd be great if you're out camping and just kind of going down. I think this is the skirt aisle and I wish I would have grabbed that one as well. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Uh, but if it's there next time I go, I'll pick it up. Just all kinds of different textiles and different laces and beading and sequins and that kind of thing on the different clothing. Let's see here. I'm trying to remember what I have coming up next. I put this back, you guys. I don't know why I did. I'm kicking myself. This would have just been so cool. Cut up. Same thing with this one. Kind of a nice little geometric type of pattern, I guess you could say. Had a really nice feel to it. Just kind of poking through. I have to say this Goodwill is probably the one that had the most uh, types of different textiles and patterns and you know the sequins and lace and things like that. So I've never seen a Goodwill with that many. At least in the ones that I've been to. And there's like the Isle of Scarves. I forgot to go down there because that's another great place to look for fabrics and whatnot. This is that uh, blue shirt that I showed you guys earlier. I've already got it cut up that will also be in the video that I will be uploading after this one. Going to be using that for some uh, Sashiko projects. And here she is, you guys. <laughs> this is where I found that really funky uh, kind of, you know, fiber jacket. And you can see on the inside there how they're just kind of looped. Um, it's kind of like a tie in there, so it was pretty easy to come apart. I haven't finished taking it apart completely yet. Just kind of picking off the parts or little bits that I need at a time. So anyway, I thought this was pretty cool. <laughs> I got a couple looks as I was walking down the aisles because I did have it hanging off the front of the cart. Uh, let's see, where am I at here? And this is another one. This almost looks like the one I first one I picked up. And I don't know why I didn't grab this one either. Uh, this, you know, was kind of another cool one. But again, if it's there the next time I go, I will definitely grab it. So... And this one I did purchase, and this is going to be a fun one to use in some of my different um, slow stitching projects, whether it be for journals or some different textile art. This one I did not grab. I think this is the one that had like some little beads on it or yeah, tiny seed beads or something, if I remember right, in some um, sequins. Really cool. Yeah, this is the one that has little beads on it. So I was worried about the beads falling off as I cut the... If, I was to cut up that sweater. This is just kind of a cool texture, basic fabric, you know, to use for a background. You could dye it, that kind of thing. Be fun to stitch on it. Uh, here's another blouse with some lace. This is more of a polyester lace. I didn't grab that. This was a cool collar, I thought, but again, I didn't purchase it. Um, and the black one there, I don't really craft with black, so I left that. And just some more, you know, knitted sweaters and different things like that that you could use. This one I did grab. This one was a cotton lace blouse and I was really happy to have found that. And uh, I think I already got this one cut up too in the video. I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure I did. So you guys will see that in the next video. And uh, yeah, just lots of, you know, material there. And I don't know why I didn't grab this one. It's like, what was wrong with me that day? So I, cause I really like this one too. So again, if it's there, I will grab it next time. And this was pretty cool. This is a machine embroidered, I guess, kind of like a, I don't know if you call it like a bathing suit cover up or just a, what do you call that when it's just like a, not a jacket. I don't know what you call that. I guess a cardigan. I don't know. But it was really pretty nonetheless. And I was contemplating that one as well. So I have a few items that I'm going to pick up if, if they're there the next time I go. And now we're going down. What section is this? Okay, now we're heading to the book section. This is the only book section they had wasn't very big at all so I didn't really poke around in there uh, this is another machine embroidered item I think this is the one that had the brand new tags on it from the department store yes this is so I didn't grab that uh, so that was kind of funky not really my colors but it was really kind of cool be a lot of fun to wear something like that it reminds me of like I don't know Arizona Mexico I don't know why <laughs> But it would certainly be a fun blouse to wear, just, you know, not for me. And this one again, some more machine embroidery on, I think it's a blouse. Am I in the blouse or dress section? I can't remember. So, really fun. I might grab that one if it's there next time too, just to kind of experiment with uh, working with more black, darker backgrounds. This one was a polyester type of lace uh, embroidery, so I left that one as well. 
This is a velvet blouse. I do have a video on embossing velvet. I'll link that below. And I was going to grab this one, but I just didn't. A couple of these I pulled out just to show you guys the different types of, uh, you know, different textiles and textures and embroidery and just different uh, feels and weights of fabric that you can find when you walk through the thrift store in the clothing section and yard sales, of course, too. And again, I don't look at the circles. That's the front of the blouse. <laughs> I was going to pull that out and take a picture of it. I don't think I would want to wear that just based on where those circles were. <laughs> so might get a little bit of attention wearing that. And this is the one of the dresses that I found that I did pick up as you guys already saw. And this one is also in that video where I'm cutting up the different items that I found at uh, this particular Goodwill shopping trip. Uh, what's this? Yeah, that's another machine embroider that also has some sequins in there, which is really pretty. Really shimmery blouse. There's another lace overlay sheer. Now we're going down, looks like the t-shirt and men's. Oh yeah, this is the men's section, t-shirt and jeans. And I'm walking over to the housewares section. I uh, backed up like that because somebody was standing there. Uh, let's see, what am I doing? Okay, so now I'm going to head you or walk you guys to that wall you see in the back with all those little baggies that are on the wall. I've never seen a uh, Goodwill or any type of a thrift shop where they bag up the different items like this. I like it. I think it's kind of a cool concept, but then there are some things. This aisle here, I already went down before I thought about filming, so sorry about that. And just showing you this, I think it was a table runner. I think it was and then again just down that aisle that I didn't that I went down earlier so anyway back to the wall so because there were some things in some of the baggies I wanted but I didn't want to purchase the bag just for one or two things I wanted in there so I left those behind but this is really cool they had some small toys they had some bits of fabric scraps uh, old sewing notions put together um, like you know napkin rings just all kinds of stuff and so now we're heading back down to that main housewares section and I think I go down the middle, if I remember right. Yes, down this section here. And on the bottom right is where I found those uh, um, those enamel roasting pans. I ended up only purchasing one. If the other two are there, I'll grab those next time. And uh, by this point, I've already went up and down all these aisles. But I couldn't film earlier because there were people in, you know, kind of shopping around in there. So just kind of going up and down there. Where do I go next? <laughs> I'm trying to remember you guys what I do next here. I think I go around to the front or the first aisle, I suppose you could say. But it was a pretty organized um, goodwill, I have to say. Okay, now I'm in the men's section. You guys, this is a fantastic area to look for, uh, you know, just different types of fabrics. And again, I keep saying the word textiles, but that's what this is. There's some hound's tooth you can find in there. Um, I don't know why I did not grab some of these jackets. The next time I go, I will definitely do that. And I love this pattern. I think, is it like a chevron? I'm not sure what that is, but I really love that one. Um, so I'll definitely grab that one for sure if it's there. And I do have a video. It's a separate one. I will link that below and show you, uh, where I'm showing you guys, excuse me, how I cut up the different men's jackets. And I think it's actually ladies' jackets in this particular video, but it's the same concept. So this is another great area to search for. This is a hound's tooth one right here. This is just another great area to look for different types of fabrics and weights and you know just all kinds of really cool things. So lots of here. I think mean, I think this is probably the best selection of different colors and patterns and um, different types of material that I found for men's suit jackets. So I was pretty happy to find that. All right, you guys, this is going to be the end. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Be sure to check the description box below for all the videos that I've mentioned thus far. Bye.